Hi everyone, this is Artemistic Kate, and I'd like to thank you for joining me for another painting video. But this one is different. This one is very different because I've been doing a series with my watercolor coloring book, which I love, and I've gotten some really great paintings out of so far, and we're going to keep doing. But on my last video, I mentioned doing this color wash technique to make a card for someone where you do a color wash on a page and then you cut out shapes and adhere them to a card. So I really want to do that today and focus on uh, showing people who are absolute beginners, people who are afraid of painting, people who tell me that they're a terrible artist and they just can't do it and they don't enjoy it, those sort of things. I'd love to show people that there are other ways to paint where you don't have to get frustrated and it's just pure fun and you end up with a great product afterwards. So I'll show you first what our goal is today of what we're going to be making and I'm going to try to be making a similar type of card. This is a greeting card here that's just blank on the inside. It is on watercolor paper and so I could paint around the edges and I think today I'm going to paint a whole an entire background on my flower. So if you're interested in making this watercolor painted flower so you can give someone a unique gift of a greeting card that is painted just for them, stay with me on this video and I'll teach you how to do it. You can be an absolute beginner, never touched paint before in your life. So let's see how you do with it. And then I also have, I did the, this with my daughter yesterday. Look at her adorable little card. It's just precious. So I'm really excited to show you guys how to do this too. She made a little miniature version and it's just so sweet. So um, whoever we send these off to, it's filled with love and we know that they'll appreciate that and enjoy it. So you can do this card any way you want to. There's no right way, there's no wrong way. I'll just show you my way and you can take it from there. So before we do that though, I want to talk about paints. This is for the absolute beginner who doesn't know what to get and what to do and you know it's just all confusing. There's so many choices. So I'm going to go through all the paints that I have and we're going to go through them and I'll show you kind of my list of least uh, or worst to best. So we're going to start, I did swatches yesterday of all of my paints that I have. I have a lot of paints for Ivy and these are the things that you can find at like pharmacy, well drugstores. I got this at Bymart which is a Northwestern pharmacy and kind of store with all kinds of goodies in there that you can find. So I got this, this brand is Greenbrier and I got it for Ivy, my daughter Ivy, and um, yeah, we painted with it once and didn't paint with it again because you can see from my swatch that I did, these colors, when you try to paint with them, it's like trying to paint with jello. It's really gooey and weird and the colors don't flow into each other and it's just chalky and it kind of just will fall off the page. Like you can see on my finger, it looks like I was rubbing chalk. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it looks like I was rubbing on chalk just by touching it. Ooh, no one wants that on their painting. And this, if you bought something like this, you would just feel frustrated and like you're a terrible artist. The paint does matter. So don't buy this as your first watercolor set. Okay? So that's a no-no. Greenbrier. No-no to that one. So the next one up of worst paint, I would say is this, which I don't know what brand it is. It came with a little art set of some kind. And it was very, very, very cheap. So um, it's the same sort of story for the most part. Really gelatinous and gooey. Oh, my camera just fell over, folks. Let's see if I can fix that. I'll be right back. 
All right, so I got my camera set back up. I'm sorry about that, guys. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. I'm trying different techniques um, with my new place of placing my camera. So if you fall down again, I'll pick you back up and put you back in the right spot. So while I was fixing my camera, my daughter reminded me that she also did swatches with the Greenbrier yesterday. I wanted her to... Uh, see how they felt and she really wanted to do swatches so um, she asked if I could show her swatches too so let me see if those are all getting on there okay those are the green briars and you can see this one today it's just totally started falling off and cracking off and making this weird white streak through it don't use green briar that's a note for everyone so this one they look like okay watercolors, right? I mean, they look like watercolor paints. This is what you might recognize if you're a parent buying paints for your kids and just trying to get a watercolor set for your children or maybe you've bought one for yourself. So these also are a tiny step up from the Greenbrier. You can see this one. The color spread a little bit, which is nice, but they're still like painting with jello and really kind of weird, and nothing like painting with real watercolor paint. So, these kind of sets, if you're really trying to learn how to watercolor paint, new. No. Stay away. Don't even try it. It'll ruin it for you, and you'll decide, ooh, I don't like painting with watercolor. So, don't do those. Next step up, this brand right here, I got at the Dollar General, which is kind of a dollar store and not. Their stuff is more than that. I think this was like $2 for this set. It's a 16 pan watercolor set. I'll try to get the whole thing here. And um, this one's still sealed. I'll show you, we have one that's open. This would be another set for like a school grade child who's just learning how to paint. These are a little bit of a step up. Still kind of getting that jello feeling. Um, probably glycerin or something like that that's making it real gelatinous. But I'll show you the swatches here. These were a little bit of a step up. We got some color flow. Even a tiny, teeny, eensy bit of granulation. It's hard to tell, but in a few of them, you get a little bit of that watercolor feel, but it's still not great. So if you're trying to really learn how to paint with watercolors, don't buy this kind of a set. Okay, please don't. All right, so next ones on the list are the Artist Loft brand from Michaels. And I took a little video on that, which I'll insert right here. <coughs> so these are the ones we've had for a while. And as you could see on the video that I just shared, they're $5 per palette. And it's a lot of colors, you know? And um, if you're really low on funds and you really really want to try watercolor these are the ones I would suggest you try so if you can't afford to buy an upgrade from this then try these just try them they're a little bit chalky I'll show you especially like this blue let's see if it does the same thing as Greenbrier it kind of does but not quite not quite as bad. I'm getting paint all over myself. Um, so it's still kind of chalky, but the colors will flow. They mix pretty well. And in this set, there's a lot of different colors if you're not comfortable with color mixing yet. So for me, like for a very beginner set on a low budget, this would be an awesome set to get. And it, you could at least get started and try something. And, um, whoops, we broke our, our lid on this one. 
And you know what? You can mix your colors on the other side. You can see Ivy did that. She had a lot of fun one day just mixing colors. So these are the ones she was mixing. So you can still mix all these colors together and it's just fun. So there's those. They're okay. They're not like a professional watercolor paint. But they're fun to use. And then these are the pearl paints. The pearl paint set, which I do use. I still use these um, as an accent on paintings. I'm going to try to twirl it around so you can see. Hopefully they'll catch the light somewhere and you can see the pearliness to them. They shimmer and they shine and they add kind of a glow effect. So $5 for this set is pretty great. And then to activate these when you really want to paint, you can use a spray bottle and you just spray them like that and let them sit for a couple minutes and then they're really easy to get um, good paint up out of. So now that I did that, I'm not going to put the swatch back in for now. So there's those. The next step up would be a set like this. I also got this one at Vine Mart. So, um, this is Simply Art by, I do not know how to pronounce this, so forgive me, I think it's Low and Cornell, that's how I would say it. Um, whoops, I think my camera slid again. I do not have a good setup here today. I'm holding it up with a bag of rice and a bag of marbles. And maybe I should put the marbles on top and the rice on the bottom, but hey, this is where we're at. I'm going to try that. Okay, here we go. Let's try that for now. So, okay, we've got this Simply Art set here. I'll go ahead and open it up and show you. This is watercolor tubes instead of a pan. And the colors, you know, some of them flow pretty well together. And you get some good um, mixing going on. And even a little bit of granulation, which is pretty cool. I like that quite a lot. For the price, I think I got this set for $12. It was also at Bimart, and it was the first watercolor tube set that I had ever bought. So I tried these out, and I made a painting that I love, and the colors are still really vibrant. It's two years later, and I hang it on my wall. It's a night sky and a tree perspective. Uh, from standing underneath the trees looking up to a very cosmic looking uh, explosion in the sky and um, I love it and I got that out of these paints so um, it is possible to make decent paintings with something like this so if you find a watercolor tube set it's worth trying if you're on a low budget again and you don't want to start with too much expense yet so maybe $12 for the Simply Art set. And then this next one I want to show you is about comparable maybe, maybe even a little less. It's a Royal um, and Langnickel, I'm not sure how to say that exactly, um, set. I got as a gift for Christmas one year, a couple years ago, and it's got it's missing a few things. It's had a couple brushes and a pencil and I gave the brushes to Ivy to use and I've used up the pencil. Um, but it's got three watercolor pencils in it which is great for outlining designs before you paint. It's got six tubes, unfortunately one black, one white. I never use those. And a pan set which even if I don't ever use the paints, I can use these pans. I can pop the paints right up out of them and I will be able to use those. So I'll show you the swatches on these. So on this side, let's see, these are the pencils. These are the tubes. I didn't do the black and white on that because I just don't ever use them. And I 
not sure that I would suggest using them, but I did do it from the pan set because they were in there. These are all the pan colors. I much prefer the tubes over the pans in this set. The pans, you get a little gra granulation, um, which I like, but they don't flow very well and they kind of just sit where you put them and don't really mix into each other. Whereas the tubes, you could get a lot of movement in a wet and wet technique, which is what we're going to do today. So there are the lower budgets. So this I don't know how much it cost because it was a gift. So there's that. Now I'm going to show you the paints I really like. Um, let me move some things around here. So next step up, well, I would say, let me think about this. The next step up would probably be these uh, Cotman watercolors. Um, it's the Skechers Pocket Box. I just got this just two days ago. I haven't even painted with it yet other than doing the swatches. And it's a great little box. You can see it's just a nice little box. And it comes with a little tiny brush that is so cute. In my mind, it's like a liner brush. Here, I'll open this up for you. It's just a teeny tiny, I would say like, definitely I just consider it a liner brush. But you can put the, the cap over the end. And it's a nice little uh, pocket set there that you can take with you anywhere. You just have to be careful not to mess up your bristles when you put the cap back on. But the set, when I did the swatches, I was really happy with what I saw so far. And like I said, I haven't even painted with them yet. We're going to paint with them today. Um, and they look like they're going to be really nice for the price point. They're $30 for the set. I had a 40% off coupon and I got a great deal on those so that was a really fun um, thing to get a couple of days ago and I can't wait to try it I've been trying to hang in there and <laughs> not try them until the video so let me move a couple of things here so I've got three more paint sets that I absolutely love and I'm going to show you these are getting up higher um, as far as price point my watercolor confections that I'm absolutely in love with the Tropicals line, it was like $20. It might have been like $18 and change. And so price-wise, this, these watercolor confections are what I would really suggest you start with. If you're a very beginner painter and you can spend $20 on a pan of, of paints. These colors are excellent. They're vibrant. Uh, the camera's having a hard time focusing on them. Maybe if I set that down and just bring this up. Hello camera. We're here. <laughs> well, that's just going to be blurry for you, I suppose. So anyway, these are just an excellent, excellent um, set. And they have other colors, like a classic that you would get, like ultramarine type and probably um, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and maybe a crimson of some kind. You know, I would assume they're those type of shades. So, oh, forgive me. That would be an alarm that I need to turn off really quick. Sorry about that, guys. Not very professional, is it? <laughs> okay, so back to the paints. I love the tin. Best tin I could ever ask for. And it comes with 12 fabulous paints. So um, if you're just starting, this is my number one choice for beginners to get. The uh, Prima Marketing Watercolor Confections um, in the Classic or the Tropicals. That would be the best beginner paint that I could suggest to anyone. So there are those. Then, I'm going to show these two at the same time. Well, no, I'll go differently. I'll do these next as my uh, highest quality paints probably that I've got, right along with the other ones. These are Holbein. 
I think it's Holbein. You might say it Holbein. I'm not sure. I would say Holbein. I never hear these words. I never went to art school. This is just me teaching and learning myself. So I'm going to say Holbein, and if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments. But these are the swatches, and just look at the brightness. Look at that. And you get some great granulations and texture and just life in these paints and they come in a package like this um, I got the 24 tube set and it's tubes of paint and you can see they're all in there I've used some more than others but I love my whole bag and I just squeeze the tubes into this palette and then I just use it from the palette. I like being able to use them like a pan, but not quite. <laughs> um, and the tubes dry nicely, and um, they're great. They're a little more expensive. I don't even remember how much this set cost. Um, but it's definitely a higher price range, and I wouldn't suggest it if you're just trying it for the first time. They're wonderful to paint with, but because of the cost, if you decide you really don't like it, it would be more than you should be spending. So there's that. And then I also have these that I love. Dr. P.H. Martin's. They're a liquid watercolor concentrate. So I'm going to go ahead and show you these. Here's the swatch. And they're totally different. But for color washes, they're amazing and so much fun to watch. They are more pricey, too. I wish I could remember the price on them. I'll have to look that up, um, and I'll put it in the description below. So, um, these paints, I absolutely love working with them. It's a liquid, you can hear that, in a tube, and it comes with this eyedropper that you can drop, and... Um, you can see this is what Ivy and I used yesterday to make our color washes for our flower painting that we're going to be doing here shortly. Um, and I'd love it if you follow along. If you've got watercolors already and paper, you can follow along and do this too. And I'll probably use liquid watercolors, but I also want to try the Cotman's because they're new. And, um, and let's see what we can come up with. I might mix in some whole bind too. Um, and maybe some of my watercolor confections and we'll do petals of different kinds maybe. I think that sounds fun. So I'll start setting this up. Um, I was going to show you guys, you know what, I'm going to change to a bigger piece of paper. I got some new paper yesterday too. Let me just take this off and I'll use this another time. I got some larger paper that was 50% off for these nice big sheets. In fact, I'm going to need to zoom out a bit here. And I'll try to line that up in a good spot. And hope the camera doesn't fall over again. This way we have plenty of room to make a nice size flower. I'm just securing that to the table. So, let's see. I've got all my different paint sets here that I'm going to be using. And Oh yeah, the paper is an 11 by 15 inch. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get settled here. I've been standing to show all the different paints. I'm going to go ahead and sit down and Let's start painting finally. Now that our paint review is done with, we can start our tutorial section. So I'm going to try to leave this maybe here. Where can I put that? Where you, Maybe I'll just put it down here where you can still see it for the most part. And I can still have room for lots of paint. And I'll set these here for the moment. And I'm going to just add into... Oh, you know what? Since this is a tutorial, let's start fresh. The things you'll need to do this project are watercolor paper. If you don't have a watercolor card, that's fine. Um, the best kind of paper uh, for me right now, price-wise, is like what I got. 
the smaller piece is the same kind. It's Canson XL. It's really affordable. It's got, um, it's a cold press, 140 pound, um, and it's got a fine uh, grain on it so that it's um, not too, there's a lot of textured watercolor papers which are amazing but when you're just starting something like this is just fine and for me financially it just makes sense so that's what I do. So I'm going to start with a blank one of these. I found these at World Market a long time ago but you can find them in a lot of places like Asian markets and things like that and it's great for mixing paints. I think you can get them from bead supply places too. They use them for organizing seed beads. So something to hold your paints in if you're if you do have liquid watercolor and you want to try that you'll need something similar to this otherwise you won't need that. Um, you'll need a decent pair of scissors. These are the best I've got right now. Um, and you'll need paint. You'll need water, of course, and plenty of it. And you'll need brushes. And the brushes that I use and I've been using are Royal Aqualon. And they've got several different sizes and sets and things like that. Um, I got two different sets. One had um, flats and uh, angled brushes and some liners and the other had all the various round sizes. So they're really great little brushes for beginners and I never moved out of them. I, you know, I'm very low income. I don't have the budget to buy all kinds of stuff. So get whatever brushes you can, even if they're brushes like this, like my daughter uses from like a uh, craft store, something that's just real basic. The only thing is a lot of the time the bristles fall out on these, so um, that can be kind of annoying when you're painting. So for me today, I'm going to use this brush and I, I kind of consider my wash brush and then my number 10 round, which is the biggest round that I've got. So I'm gonna use those today. So to start with, um, I wanna show you how the liquid watercolors work because they're just so cool. And I think I'm gonna mix, I'm gonna use some of this uh, deep red rose now these colors are light fast which means they'll last a long time without fading and a little goes a long way on these you can see I just put a little drop in there because I'm not making a large painting and I think I'll mix that with some um, phthalo blue I'm gonna go ahead and try that together today and um, again I'm just gonna put a little bit doesn't take much. And then I also want to make a yellowy orange. So I've got my red, I've got my blue, and I'm going to add, because I'm going to make a green too, I'm going to do a couple of the yellow because it can get kind of taken away, taken up by the other things. So, um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. Alright, I've got that set aside. Now I'm going to go ahead and add just a couple drops. You know what, I'm going to move my water closer to me today. I'm going to add a couple, a bit of water to each one. I like to mix them up that way because you don't want to use them straight from the bottle. They're concentrated. Um, I'm going to just move my, <laughs> move my water closer for the moment. Um, and just get, I'm trying not to touch it yet because I don't want to get it on my brush yet. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then for the green, I want to just dip lightly into the blue and then I'm going to mix it in here. Look at that, how it just kind of exploded with color. And I don't think I will need all of that 
to mix the green that I want, but it's already here, so let's go ahead and do it. Look at this bright green. I'm going to get a little scrap piece of paper here. Sorry, I've got so many things everywhere now. My table is full. Um, let's see, scrap paper. Here we go. I want to show you what that looks like on a page. Look at how nice and bright that is. Once it's dry, it'll fade a little bit, you know, all watercolor paints do, but it's such a nice, bright, springy, summery green. I'm really happy with that. So, we'll keep that green. I'm going to go ahead and mix the water into these paints so they're a little bit more ready to use. And the great thing is when I put the red and the blue together on the page, if I just do like, I'll primarily do red first probably, um, then it will make some beautiful lovely purples on the page. So it doesn't take much. I'm going to do some different sections of the different paint brands. So all right, if you hear a weird sound, that would be my daughter playing with the ball out in the hallway. <laughs> There's a whole lot of bouncing going on out there. So, all right, let's finally get started painting. I know we're like half an hour or so into this video. Sheesh, I can be so long-winded. But it was important for beginners to know what kind of paint to get. So I'm going to just start in this top corner. First thing I want to do is make our center. I'm going to make the center of our flower and I'm going to do it, I might make a couple so you can see the difference. I'm going to put this, oh I didn't activate that yellow yet. I'm going to put this yellow that's been watered down here. Now watch this paint. The yellow maybe doesn't flow quite as much but you can see it starting to spread out and I just did kind of a zigzag shape there. Now what I'm going to do is just barely dip my brush into the red just a bit and where I have it kind of um, clear here I'm going to mix that red in too. Now I know that looks like too much red. Why would you want that in the center of a flower? Well let's give it a minute and I might do just one of these and mix mix those in together and I want to leave some some nice uh, yellow but look we're getting a peachy orange now how lovely is that and I could even add a bit more yellow back in if I want to make it more sunny looking which I think I'll do and I'll just go right through the center and I wiped my brush off so it's not covered in orange and then I'm going to do a just like that. See how I added a bit more yellow and kind of toned down that. But now they're going to spread out as they dry and mix together. And that's pretty fun to watch and see how it changes. It's like it transforms. So I'm going to do that for my center. I'm going to do each type of paint individually. And then I'll go in and do the others so we can compare um, okay, so now we need some petals. I'm going to go in here and get it nice and wet. I can't really see it that well with the lighting I've got. I'm going to go right down to the edge of this thing here. And I'll get more paper as I need to. I'm going to try to look. You can look from different angles to try and see. I don't really want to touch the yellow too much because I don't want my colors mixing into each other. So now I'm going to get some pink or a deep red rose. Watch that. Watch that. Oh, it's so much fun. Watch it. Look at that. What if we just put a drop and a drop and a drop, drop it around. While the paint is, or the water is still wet on the page, look how fun that is to watch spread out. For me, that's just like the best. That's why I love these paints so much. So I'm just going to polka dot it for now. 
You can even do like get uh, paint on your brush and do a tap. But then you get paint everywhere and you don't always want that. So now what I'm going to do, I think I might even mix it a little bit in the pan. I put some glue into whatever red rose was left. And now I'm going to kind of do the same sort of swirling thing, but with blue. And you might be like, well, hang on. That just looks weird for flower petals. Well, hang in there with me because let me tell you, by the time it's all said and done, we're going to end up with some really cool looking uh, flower petals. So it's about being you and being unique. You know, each type of paint is different. Every single painting you do is different. And it's what makes it fun. It makes it unique and it makes you you. Now I'm going to go and just lightly, lightly go over all of that. And it kind of takes away from the polka dots, but at the same time you can still see those deeper, darker spots. You could have left them as polka dots, but that's kind of what I wanted to do today is something like that. So now I'm going to wipe off those couple spots right there just because I want to put my green down here. We're going to make the green for a leaf. So let's just do that right here. Just do that right here. Get a little section wet. Water. Just water on the brush. Nothing else. Just some water on the brush and onto the paper. And then get yourself some green and you can swirl it in the idea of a leaf shape if you want to or you can just go like this. You don't have to draw. You don't have to be a big major artist. You're just putting paint on a piece of paper. And then I'm going to rinse that out. And guess what I'm going to do? Because I love making it look a little more leafy, like I did on my last card that I showed at the beginning, I'm going to go through with a vein, like that, with yellow. Look at that, I just put yellow on the brush. I'm going to wipe it off to get the green off. Okay. Then I'm going to get yellow on my brush again, just on the tip. And I'm going to go like this, and I might be able to get a couple out of it. Just like that. It won't keep the whole thing, but it will keep that impression um, to a point. So you may even want to make them longer than you want because the paint's kind of going to seep in there. Alright, so there's that. And we still need to make a little stem. So here I'm going to just make... I'm going to move this guy just a little bit because we're just about done with these paints anyway and just make a little streak here and I'm going to put a stripe up of that and then I would like to have some yellow tone going up into my stock my stem and I'm just going to put darker on one side and when I cut that that'll give it a little more interest alright I'm just going to extend that slightly just in case okay so that was the dr ph martins that's your higher grade but different as a liquid uh, watercolor concentrate so now let's see how we could do it with paints that you might be able to buy these are at michael's i got these on amazon so whichever way you'd like to shop Let's do these next because they are my number one recommendation for the new watercolor artist. And yes, you will be an artist. You are an artist. It's a feeling in your heart. If you're interested in the slightest in painting, then you're an artist. You don't have to sell your work to be an artist. You just have to try and enjoy doing it. And even if you don't enjoy it at first, work into it. Um, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, please. So, all right, I'll set these over here for this one. We'll do it in the middle kind of here. And I'm going to move my water over. All right, so let's do our center first. Just some water. 
water on the page. Here we go. And I've got some yellow on my brush still, but that's okay. So then I get a little bit more water on my brush and rub it over the pan. Just like that. And rub it a few times until it gets kind of liquidy looking on the top. And I've got paint on my brush. And we'll do the same technique. And you can see it doesn't like explode on the page like the other ones, but it is starting to expand out there. So I'm going to do a little bit thicker stripes because of that. Then let's add in a little bit of orange, which I've got. It's kind of like a vermilion in this set. But different. These colors are a little different because they're the tropical set. So they're kind of, they do remind me of like the Caribbean or something like that. Just so vibrant and bright. So I don't need a lot of that, but hey, let's put a couple little specks. That's going to be more than I need by a long shot. But you know what? Why not do it? And I can add in more yellow, just like on the other one right over that one I'm going to streak in so it's a little bit paler orange and I'm going to get some more here and streak that in but I love those little specks there so I might cut my center out from right here that's the thing we're just doing color washes and it's just easy and fun and delightful to do so next we need to do our petals petal spot so get your page nice and wet <laughs> sorry I'm kind of having some allergies out here it's so beautiful but at the same time uh, my body is not that crazy about all the pollen flying around in the air I don't know about you guys but beautiful green growing things and I don't always mix <laughs> So for these petals, I want to use my bright red because I just love it. If you notice, you can see certain pans are lower than others because they're just favorites. So for that, I'm going to just go through. Look at that. For a $20, under $20 set, look at how that flows. Look at that color. It's beautiful. I love it. And I really don't want to mess that up. I kind of just want... Maybe I'll just leave it like that and have some pure uh, red petals because I think with these variations with the white, if I cut my petal this direction, it's going to look beautiful. So you know what? I'm leaving that how it is. Thank you so much Watercolor Confections for another beautiful, beautiful, simple way of painting. So leave it. You don't have to paint everything with mixed colors. So now, let me just set that there. We're going to do our leaf and our stalk. And I think maybe let's just use the rest of this page for this kind of stuff. And we'll do the other page for the Kaufman uh, Sketchers pocket box. Okay, so we need to do a green... I'd like to kind of mix a green, um, and I'll show you how to do basic color mixing. So this one I would consider like a pale vermilion almost. And here I've used it mixed with the bright yellow, so I'm going to just go back and do some more of, of that same sort of thing. So I'm just kind of rubbing it off on the well, they call this a well, where um, it kind of slants down. Okay, and it has a little lip to keep it from spreading further, except I rubbed my brush on it. Okay, so then I'm going to pick up more of this yellow. And see, I got green in the yellow, but that's okay because I'm going to pull most of that out and I can wipe it off when I'm done too. But I want a lot of yellow because I got a lot of green. So now I'm going to just mix that in and then kind of brightens it up. Look at that. That's going to be a beautiful green. So now let's just mix it in here. 
I love that color. It's going to make a beautiful leaf. So you can put spots and things to give it more variation. See, I'm just tapping the brush gently, very gently. That's going to give it some nice variation. And then I think I'll do the same thing with the veins of the leaf. And I'm going to get yellow on the brush. I got too much, I'm sure. And I'm going to kind of follow what I've seen going on. Oh, I had red on my brush somehow. How would I get red on my brush? Well, you know what? We'll go with it. Oh, I think I wiped it on a paper towel that had red on it. Okay. Well, something happened. I might have dipped onto that one on accident. That's okay. We'll go with that. Look at that color. So we're going to use that as a leaf. Okay? And then we need a stalk. And we'll use the same green shade that we made here. Oh, I didn't wet it first. Let's do a dry technique. That'll be more bold. And it doesn't have to be the shape of the stock yet. We're going to cut it. So I'm going to make it wider than I really want. I'm going to add some color. Look, we're already getting granulation here. I love it. I love these watercolor confections. These absolutely are the paints I would recommend for a beginner. For your first paint set. To really get a feel of what watercolor painting is all about. Because it's not just kids paints. There's so much more to it than that. And it feels different, it looks different, and it's so worth the investment. So now we're done with these Prima Marketing watercolor confections. I'm gonna just set it down because this is wet. I don't wanna flip it over and have it potentially drip into my other paints. So I'm gonna just try to find a spot on my very full table, set those down and dry out before I close them up. All right, so the last ones we're gonna do, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna peel off this here, and I'm going to set it aside, and we'll probably blow dry it here shortly. Okay, and I'm gonna grab that other piece that we started with. I'll try to get it in a good spot for you guys here. All right. I know this is a longer video, but I hope you'll enjoy making this craft too. So I've got another thing of clean water here I'm gonna switch to. I'm gonna open up our little set. And we're gonna do the same exact thing because we're comparing. This is a comparing. Now this is a set you can buy at Michael's. I haven't used it yet, like I said. We're going to do our center first. And I'm going to use the same kind of bright colors. So I'm going to go for this brightest yellow. Brightest yellow. Right in here. It's not flowing so much, so I'm going to just fill her in but not too intensely. And you can still see, I don't know if you can see a variation there from where I put the stripes in, the streaks, the zigzag, whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to get a little bit of this um, vermilion, I think they called this one. Let's see. Nope. Cad red, cadmium red pale hue is what this one is. And for this, I'm just going to put some drops in like that and we'll see what happens to it. We'll see if they spread out. We'll see. Um, I don't want to do too much of a pattern and I've got a pattern. So now we'll have that be the center of our flower and we'll see what happens to that if they bloom and blossom out um, more. They look like they are a little bit and that's going to look really cool. So that'll be a neat center. Every paint is different. They're all very different. So now let's work on our petals. 
I'm just going to get a good amount of water on the page. You just get your paper wet. Water on a page. Plenty of it. And then I'm going to use this Crimson Lake. I think, or what is this one? Oh, this is a lizard in Crimson in this set. And that's giving us a little flow. Look at that. Color's not quite as intense. Maybe I just haven't activated it enough. And I'm already making a mess out of this palette. That's pretty cool looking. Let's make enough so we can make our petals and make plenty of them. I'm just doing kind of this swirling zigzag and not totally filling it in because I like the variations of color. So then for part of it, let's see, I think this is, this is the ultramarine. I'm going to make some of that and I didn't need that much probably. Let's see what it does. I'm kind of thinking about how like at the base of a petal sometimes you get a streak of other color but I'm not getting a good purple out of mixing on the page and I probably should have mixed a purple. So what I'm going to do is get more of the crimson, the alizarin crimson and I'm going to add that into it and see how that's mixing a little bit different color there. I'm going over it. Now we're getting a slight purpley hue. So I'll put that at the bottom of my petals and have like a darker spot. So I might add even just a little bit more over here. All right. There it is. Petals. Gonna be petals. I hope you'll hang in with me for the whole video here. I know it's getting long. Um, okay, I'm going to use their sap green just straight out. Oh, I didn't water the page again. Well, guess what? Let's just go with it. We're going to make a leaf eventually, but not yet. If you want to just paint out a leaf, you can paint out a leaf. But I'm going to show you how to do it out of just big splotches of color washing. And then let's add a little bit of the yellow, just like we did on the other ones, and see how the veins work on here. See, that looks great. It's nice and bright. And it went through really great. Sometimes it's hard to get yellow to, to behave and go through, but I'm going to just go with what I've got on the brush. Extend that out a little bit just in case. All right, and we need a stalk, a stem, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm just going to put a line right over here. And I'm using the sap green. Just like that. And then I'm going to get just a little bit more of the lemon yellow and kind of run along the edge. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and um, blow dry these uh, and finish them so we can do our cutting out and gluing. All right, so I will be right back. Okay, everybody, I am back. I actually found out my battery was dying. That's how long this video is, I know, but you know what? It's really important for everyone to learn the right kind of paints to get, the right kind of paints to not get, so I should say the wrong kind of paints, um, and to understand how the different types of paints work. So I hope you hung in there with me and now we're going to finish this craft. So we've got all of our color washes dry and I wound up just letting them dry naturally while I charged my battery a little bit. And now we're going to start cutting out. I think what I'll do is show you how I'm going to do it and then I might speed it all up other than my first one, at least for the, uh, for some of it. So I think what I'll do first, when I cut um, patterns out of these papers, I like to 
first cut out kind of the individual colors. So for this first one, I'm going to show you how to cut your stem in real time and your leaf and then show you what I do for the petals and then I'm going to speed it all up so that it's not another hour watching me cut. Cut paper. Um, so I'm going to set that down. You can see I've got my center, I've got my leaf paper, I've got my stem paper. So all I'm going to do is cut a sort of circle. It can be kind of uh, oval. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. It's just going to be for the center of our flower. Now take a look at that. Whoops. Take a look at that. Isn't that a pretty center? Look, it's got some different coloring going through it. I think that's great. I might make it smaller in the long run, but I'll just set that here. And then our stock, you don't want it to be perfectly straight because nature is not perfectly straight. So I'm going to kind of make some variations here. And you kind of want it to be wider at the base than it is at the tip. So here's that little guy. Okay. So we've got a stem, we've got a center, which is probably too large. And now let's cut a little leaf out. I'm going to leave kind of a stem for the leaf. And I just freehand this, and you can make any shape of leaf that you want to make. Look at that. We have got a leaf here. So now we've got a leaf, we've got a stalk, and we've got a center for the flower, which right now I'm going to just cut a little bit smaller. Even though I love the way it looks, I know for the size of petals that I'm making, that was just a little large. So. All right, so I'm going to set those aside, and then this is, these are all the uh, P.H. Martins, Dr. P.H. Martins paints that I'm um, trimming out right now. I'm going to go ahead and cut that paper off, cut the extra. So then what I've got is a heart, and I used this yesterday. It's just this little heart, and then I'm going to use it as my pattern and just kind of trace around it. It doesn't have to be exact. You could freehand this. I'm using hearts because I think it's cute and sweet and full of love for people. So you can see I just traced a heart and I'm going to go ahead and go through and trace some more across the page here. And now is when I'm going to start speeding the video up, and I'll put some music on for you, just so you don't have to watch the whole thing. I'm going to do each type individually, one at a time, and I'll show you as I go. So um, here's where the music will start, and the video will speed up. all cut out from all the different types. 
this here on the bottom is our PH Martins, Dr. PH Martins. Then we have our uh, Prima Marketing Watercolor Confections. And then we have our Windsor and Newton Cotman uh, Sketchers Pocket Book type right here. So what I did is I pulled out a few of my watercolor cards that I have ready to go. You can just use a piece of watercolor paper that you cut to the size you want and try to find if you have envelopes or something for that. My cards came with envelopes so I'm going to go ahead and use three of these and make three separate flowers hopefully and let's see how it works together there. I'm going to use a glue stick, just a plain old Elmer's. Um, it's purple, dries clear, and we could use better glue like um, Mod Podge, but sometimes that can make the paper warp. So this is a nice dry glue, and I think it's going to work just fine. So first we want to arrange it, and I'm going to leave my card flat. This is your front side. This is the inside. I'm going to do it like this so it's not popping up on me the whole time. I'm going to just scoochie these up right here. Okay, so first we want to try to take a look at it and arrange it and see, well, how do we want to even do this? Like, maybe I want my leaf to go, like, here. It's kind of a little large, so I'm going to try to move my flower just a touch. And I'm going to have my stem for my leaf go under. So it's going to kind of go like that. And then we're going to have that just like this card. See? I'll keep that for a reference. And then the petals, they go behind. And you can cut out as many petals as you want. Let's see, what have I got here? Um, I've got six petals cut out. So I might do it just kind of like slightly separated. Do three on the top. Well, I can separate them a little more than that even. So it's a little different because I didn't do as many petals as I did on my flower yesterday. And we can scooch them in just a little bit more too. It's about playing around with it until you get something you like. And see, I think that looks really cute. So and what I'm going to do now, I'm going to think about how I did that. And I'm going to turn it upside down. Get my glue stick. I'm going to co cover the whole back of the center. Just like that. And then I'm going to start putting the petals in those positions and I just adhere them right onto the back and you have a minute to slide them around and get them where you want them to be too and they will slide on their own too this part's a little bit tricky doing the gluing don't let it just uh, ruin the craft for you just try to work with it the best you can and move them around where you need them to be. Like that. Got a little too close. Maybe they're a little too far in. But I've got it just like that. I'm happy with how that looks. I'm going to go ahead and add some glue onto the back of all of these petals. Well, I got ahead of myself a little bit because I need to glue my stem down first. So I might need to add a bit more there. I'm going to just cover the stem in glue and I want it to be right at the base of my card and up. Oh, and I forgot to put this underneath too. See, I'm just all about forgetting along the way. <laughs> but that's the thing. There's no right way, there's no wrong way, and I can still pop this up and get my leaf in there where I want it to be. And then I just want to try to push everything down nice and firmly. Okay. Now that's set on there a little bit more because this stuff dries pretty quick. It's not perfectly adhered yet though. So you just want to get glue pretty much over most of it. 
so they'll all adhere to the page and then you arrange it well I'm trying to fix that as I go arrange it where you want it I like it right there right there that's the spot for it and then you just press it down firmly and then wait for it to dry and let me tell you what a sweet little card to send to someone that you love that you made yourself take a look at that there it is all right so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one sped up my battery's dying again these are long videos um, I'm gonna let it dry flat okay and I'm gonna charge my battery and I'll come back and speed up gluing and putting together the other ones so you can see how they turned out. All right, I will see you guys in just a little bit. For you, it'll be instant. Okay, everybody, I am back. I've got my battery charged up a little bit. So this has dried some more, and it's pretty much ready to uh, actually give out to someone. But I'd let it dry all the way before I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it flat to dry all the way so it's not flapping around in the breeze. And as it's drying, you might press it down just a little bit. So there's our finished card. Since we did the um, petals and stems and everything with the other ones, this is the Prima Marketing um, Watercolor Confections Tropical Set. This is the Windsor and Newton um, Cotman uh, Pocket Sketchers book. And I'm going to go ahead and do these in fast forward. So here you go. Just set them up here. Well, they've got to lay flat still, but we've got a whole garden of very different flowers. And then the one from yesterday, too, and my daughter's little one, too. There it is. Watercolor, color wash, absolutely great project for the very most beginner of beginners. I hope you guys will try it along with me or sometime soon and you know it was a long video but I hope you got lots of good information to get started on your own watercolor journey and oh I hope it's a fantastic one. I wish you all the most happy painting experiences and thanks again for joining me. I really enjoyed doing this video for all of you that may find it and I wish you so many blessings and a beautiful day whenever you see this video and good luck on all of your painting if you do this card please comment below and let me know that you did it I would love to hear that other people have been trying out my color wash paper card technique and in the future you could cut any design out you want do a color wash and make anything you want for a card for someone you love anyway thanks again have a great day and I'll see you next time